Talk. I'm your host, Paul DiRienzo, and we have a great show in store for you yet again. My guest, Minerva Durham, who is the proprietress or proprietor. Director. Uh, director of the Spring Street Studio, which is also the Minerva's studio or drawing studio. Minerva's well. drawing studio. And uh, she is also, besides an artist and a teacher of artists, she's holding out against the full force of gentrification, just sort of like a uh, the uh, holding out against Hurricane Sandy, Superstorm Sandy's coming up the East River, and it's flooding New York City, particularly Lower Manhattan and the former, you know, what we know, what today they call Soho, but we know is south of Houston, <laughs> and Spring and Prince Street and that whole area, and have actually um, turned it into, uh, you know, she's prevailing. Prevailing. Congratulations yes. for prevailing. I, I was not renewed. I wasn't evicted. I just wasn't renewed at right. Spring and Lafayette. Right. That's where you are. Spring and Lafayette. So and so I went to yeah. Broom Street. That's a place to give people who ha haven't grown up here and lived their whole lives in, in Manhattan and New York City. That is a place where I remember years ago uh, renting a darkroom studio to print photographs of demonstrations for $10 uh -huh. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars an hour doesn't anymore. So we exist could print them in our underground newspaper, uh -huh. which we published in the basement of a house on Bleecker Street. Those days are over. <laughs> right. We have to adjust. The place we used to pay twelve hundred dollars a month for is now six million dollars to buy, and they pay. They spend twenty thousand dollars a month to rent it, one floor of it or it. I don't know what the deal is now anymore. Well, the restaurant b above where I used to be. Uh, is now a sandwich shop that pays about 150,000 a month. But the restaurant went up from like 20 to 40,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And my rent was uh, only 2,500. Uh -huh. I won't say what my current rent is, but it shot through the 3 roof. years ago I had to leave right. the basement, which was reasonable. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in a storefront at 293 Broom holding forth every day with nude figure models for mm -hmm. artists. And I teach, and I give little lectures, and I have other people teaching, too. They teach free, and uh, we pay the models, but the teachers don't get paid because we're, we have a deficit. So I'm trying to raise money right now, but mm -hmm. it's coming along. That's good. It's a little people, difficult. People are, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough economy. Right? We're in a Trump economy. Yeah. I didn't want to go on GoFundMe. I thought that it was relying upon the kindness of strangers, and I thought it was mm -hmm. vulgar, yeah. and I kind of resisted it. But one of my students said to me, oh, he said, uh, people all over the world would want to give 5 or $10 to keep a figure drawing studio going. Well, people all over the world aren't giving 5 or 10 but a few people that I know and other people know about the studio are giving some money. Right. So why is it that people would give tens of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis to protect Minerva's drawing studio. What is it about your studio? Not tens of thousands. <laughs> Not that much. Thousands. What, why would they protect my studio? Because I've been running it uh, for 27 years, seven days a week, mm -hmm. three times a day, figure drawing, open to the public. Anyone can come in. Reasonable rates. Uh, you don't have to enroll. You just come in and draw. And it's you pay $22 to come in once, or you can buy a card. The big card is only $11 a session, or $550 for mm -hmm. 50 or you can get five sessions for 85 etc. And the cards are good as long as the studio is open. So some people have come back with cards that are 10 years old. Really? And some of my artists have been there all 27 years with me, quite a few, like about 20 people. Uh -huh. Others have died or got sick or moved out of town. What is it about your, uh, your style of teaching that uh, has attracted so many people well, to learn how to draw from you? I, I'm not much of a, a self-promoter, but I'll say that I have fabulous models. Promote away. <laughs> what? <laughs> Promote away. That's why we're here. I have fabulous models who, uh, who care about me and I care about them. And... Uh, we're very quiet. We don't have alcohol while we're drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I teach students by, if they're beginners, I have them sit next to me, and I try to get them to get the flow of the body and things mm -hmm. like that. Right. And then I give five-minute lectures on subjects that can be either highly intellectual or just uh, visual. 
-hmm. Actually, in the lecture I gave today was yeah. about changing uh, a nude figure model into a bird and the structure, the voting structure of birds. So do you okay. want me to do one of those? Or? Yes, well, first let's, oh, show, let's show us the what do we have here. Well, I've Speaking had a, of birds. my student Tomas Dascam from Chile yeah. has, um, goes to Patagonia all the time when mm -hmm. he's in Chile and takes photographs. And apparently you can mm. pick up feathers without being arrested oh, really? in Patagonia. Oh, really? As long or, as they're on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> they're not on the bird. <laughs> it's all right. And he found this wonderful skull of uh, the condor. I think the condor has the largest wingspan. Yes, that's a of, condor, right? Big yeah. And a uh, bird with big wings and it's. Yeah, and the eyes uh, look Soars out to the yeah, outside yeah, and yeah. the beak is. Wow, look. what a beak. Yes. So, Can anyway. Can we see that? Yeah, show, well, let's show it again. Wait, let me see. Wait, Can I let's hold see. It? Let's I make you hold, hold You show Can it. I you know how it? to yeah. do this. I'm not taking it. Oh, you're doing I'll, great. You're and doing I'll take this me. back here. I'll take Okay, back. here, let me get this right. So, you here get, you know how to do is the thing. condor skull. The top of the skull. That's interesting. That's the inside of it, the top of it. It looks like a condor. Oh, it's looking into the camera is amazing, especially with this. Very small head and I think bald. Yeah. From. Yeah. We have one student whose father had raptors or um, this is amazing. birds of prey and falconry, and, yeah. and she said that they they put their heads into the carcasses, and also they can't they have to be bald. So the gook doesn't stick to their to their head, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is I'm holding something that had like all kinds of dead carcasses all over. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You're holding right. it, it ate former many, life. Former life that ate a lot of dead things. History. Were, You're oh, holding we, history. That's like humans, right? Anyway, all thanks right. to Tom Tomas. Yeah, thank you for that. That's amazing. So he lent me this, and I lent him a human skull. Uh huh. And he's painting his human skull, a really in, a, human skull? in a vanitas. Yeah. Well, we have all sorts of bones. Right. Human skull. Well, now only doctors can buy those things, but right. I used to have them from the before. Day, yeah. So I want to show. I want to show a. Um, a figure I drew just uh -huh. in like a two-minute pose, and I'm going to draw on top of it. But first, I want to show that there's a little profile here, mm -hmm. an ear, the hair, wow. the neck, uh, scapula and back, the back, the buttocks, the hip, the thigh over here, one thigh here and one thigh there, a breast there, and an arm somewhere here. Now, I can turn this creature into a bird. Right. Would you like me to do that? Yes, I would. T turns more to the camera. Yeah, I'm going to show this. And put it in, right there you go, right there. Like that, it's a good angle, right there. Yeah. Okay, so All there. Right, now good. I'm going to turn it. The first thing I'm going to do is to increase the length of the neck. I'm going to no, take hold the... Hold it up a little, like, at an angle. Little, that okay, right? that's, good. that's good. I, I'm known for drawing upside down. Right, go, great. That's my... Oh, that's cool. why people come to my <laughs> studio, <laughs> because I draw... You teach how to draw upside down. It's no, great. no, no, I, don't, I draw my demonstrations oh, upside yeah. down. Okay. So I'm making the neck very long, and then I'm going to take the profile of that condor skull, and I guess this would be a... I, I don't know. Actually, it's not a bird of prey, but I'm going to use that. So the, the skull... Uh, the the backbone comes right into the skull, mm -hmm. and there are many many vertebrae down. We only have mm -hmm. seven neck vertebrae, but they have a lot. So mm -hmm. their heads, uh, like the owl's head, can go all the way mm -hmm. 360 yeah, degrees. Right, around and around, right? Now oh the sternum on a human is just uh, what six inches long, four mm -hmm. to seven inches, okay. but a sternum on a bird is huge. It has um, a flat shape and a keel. So uh, the breast muscles are, mm -hmm. pectoral muscles are um, connected to that. And when you carve a turkey, you see uh -huh. the white meat and the center part and they're large right, muscles, right. but they actually are not flight muscles in the turkeys that we eat, but uh -huh. most. They've been bred out of them. So yeah, and, and they don't really. Like the succulent white meat and dark yeah. meat. Yeah, the uh, most birds have really strong pectoral yeah. muscles to fly. So, yeah. and then the backbone con continues until it gets to a tail, uh, and uh, a little part called pygostyle. And mm -hmm. then the pelvic girdle is long, and um, of course birds are dinosaurs. Uh -huh. And the pubic bone, on us the pubic bone is joined. Uh -huh. uh, and not totally joined, but uh, it doesn't really move. Uh, and on them, 
the pubic bone is just a line, uh, a, a form coming down, and it doesn't meet in the front because uh -huh. uh, it just doesn't. And then there's the part that the thigh is articulating with, and the thigh is short, and it comes to a kneecap and uh, then the tibia fibula together come down, and then the heel and uh, the heel and the tarsal and metatarsal bones, and then the f the digits themselves would be three uh -huh. uh, here and one there in this particular uh -huh. bird. This actually, I, I didn't make a bird of prey out of that because they have a specific uh, foot. It, right? So now, uh, what else? Oh, I have to get the wings in. Right. The wishbone is the clavicle, what we have right here. Well, so the wishbone meets I want to get rid of that face. The wishbone meets the coracoid, which is a strut up to the wishbone. And then there's a blade for the scapula. And then the three together give us an articulation for um, the humerus, or the upper arm, to the radius and ulna, and then carpal bones on one radial, one ulnar, mm -hmm. and then metacarpals. But right by this carpal bone, we have the thumb poking up, and the thumb mm -hmm. acts as, what is that called on an airplane? The little thing that causes rise. Latch, or, or, no, a little thing that causes? The lift. Lift, oh, the uh, aerolon or something? Yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, right. So they have a little thumb up there. Oh, yeah. oh, and see. then there's a, the index finger is holding important wings, and mm -hmm. then there's a, a second mm -hmm. one too, a, a second finger, so we have, the first, what they do in science is to mm. name this Roman numeral one, and this is Roman numeral two, and this is Roman numeral three. Oh, and okay. actually, this is a little crude upside down, but there should be feathers back here, and of sure. course, all the wing feathers there. Right, and right. so, what uh -huh. I do is to make a um, a human into a bird. Right. And I did this. It's amazing how you did that. A year ago, right. on the and we've reproduced that one, which was a successful lecture day. Mm -hmm. We've re I oh, this here, this one here on the butt. Yeah, oh, I first I drew a model named yeah. Maria Holmquist, yeah. and then I turned her into a bird. Let's hold this so it doesn't reflect the light too much, and we can uh, see it better. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So um, I drew it in charcoal mm -hmm. and added yeah. pastel, really? and there are lots of little drawings uh -huh. there, like the w I've described the uh -huh. uh, sternum. Sure. And and it was a, that was a successful drawing, so there's one, two, and three. So we made it into a tote bag, which uh -huh. for a $50 donation, <laughs> someone can have a tote bag. Oh, great. Let me show and advertise the where, Minerva's where Drawing Studio. Can you go to your website? Do you have a website? Oh, no, no. You, they have to come to the studio. Oh, okay. Which is, again, I'm very old-fashioned. What's, what's the address again? Uh, 293 Broom. They have to come and draw. And, 293 Broom Street. Uh, yes. And where is Broom Street? Most people don't know where Broom Street is unless they live around here. Broom Street is parallel to Spring Street downtown. Uh -huh. And it's um, where I'm located on the east side. It's blocked by Sarah Delano Roosevelt Park. Right. There's a corridor through. Why do they name that after her and not Eleanor? Sarah. The oh. mother instead of Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife. Sarah Delano Roosevelt. Right, I, that was isn't that Franklin funny? Roosevelt's I never even mother. thought that way. That's, yeah. That's his mother. His they mother. named the park after Well, his she was very influential in making sure they were married, making sure they were comfortable, making sure they the had a house in New York. Yeah. And I guess she was the matriarch. I guess right. it was the that's matriarch. Why she got the park. <laughs> <laughs> she got the park. She got the park. I don't know. All right, Minerva's Maybe Drawing Studio, right by Sarah Re Re Delano Delano Roosevelt. Roosevelt and Roosevelt. And also on Make Music New York. Mm -hmm. The winter solstice. Yeah. We're going to be in that corridor. Okay. Andrew Bolotowski will be playing his flute, oh. and we're going to sing some holiday songs. Uh, when is that? Uh, December twenty-first at noon. Okay. The December hottest 21st. part of this. Th December twenty-first oh, yeah. at noon. Which is at the highest part of the winter solstice. The high. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. Okay. So make music, New York winter. Uh, Do you okay. ever go to those things? Uh, no, I haven't. They're I, wonderful. I have to go this time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, I'm promoting them, but I'm promoting myself, too. Right. So, um, oh, so I was going to show uh, some pictures, too, yeah. of 
various things. The, the web is great for yeah. research. So you can find on the web all sorts of mm -hmm. animal descriptions. And here we have those very many cervical vertebrae and the shape of the, mm -hmm. the typical shape of a bird skull. I mean, even it's not just the condor, it's right. all of them have this. It's interesting that so drawing figures of animals or people relies on knowing something scientifically about them. Uh, the bony structures. If, yeah. if, if that's science, how do you find out about bony structures? By science. Well, that's a or eating them, I guess, too. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what I want people to do. I want them to save the bones in their Thanksgiving turkey and clean them off and soak them in a little, uh, you can boil them first, boil off the meat and make soup and then save the bones and all the vertebrae will fall apart and, uh -huh. and everything will be separate. But then soak them in a little Clorox and water and okay. then draw them. Okay. and try to put them back together, but not to hold them back together, but look at them as disarticulated or uh -huh. semi-articulated. Now, that whole idea of semi-articulated bones is very important. Now, here are, if you've ever eaten chicken wings. Sure. Does that look familiar? That, that's the chicken wing. That's, that's the, the upper arm, the upper arm, <coughs> the radius and ulna, lower arm, mm -hmm. carpals or wrist bones mm -hmm. here, right. oh, metacarpals, two of them, the thumb off to the side, uh -huh. The index finger, and where's the second finger? Wow. It's somewhere there. Anyway, artists uh, study anatomy either by cutting up dead bodies, or dissection, or by drawing disarticulated bones. And actually. Do you cut up dead bodies? No, I anatomy. don't. And I always felt so guilty that I was teaching anatomy and I never cut up a <laughs> dead body. Right, that's sort of part of the deal, but right? Then I finally read a 1906 text by Paul Richet, the great mm -hmm. French anatomist, when he took all over Le Col des Beaux Arts after having worked with Charcot in, mm -hmm. with the hysterics. Remember Charcot, the father of neurology? There's a famous painting of Charcot and a woman <gasps> having a hysteric fit oh, really? and, and 25 doctors looking at her, which of course is a <laughs> fire for feminist outrage that well, right, these 25 a woman being hysterical yeah. right? and the doctors all these male doctors like <laughs> stroking their chins what is the problem well it was the part of the times yeah, right. and charcot was a genius i mean uh -huh. he he was the first neurologist and mm -hmm. richet was a very talented artist who was a doctor and did sculptures and studies so richet actually finally took over the l'ecole des beaux-arts mm -hmm. in 1906 and he wrote that Beaux Arts New York is was made in Beaux Arts for years. It was the most favored architectural style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he decided that dissection wasn't that good. What you should do is to draw bones, like real bones, mm -hmm. uh, and then draw the human, and then place in your drawings of the bones in that position. Mm -hmm. And uh, he reduced the number of dissections, and in 1968 in Paris, in the mm -hmm. Lake des Beaux Arts, uh, the new director got rid of all the zinc tables. Uh -huh. Everyone thinks it's so fancy to go to a zinc bar. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> That's what they used to cut people up on. Right? <laughs> <coughs> and they were dead, of course. <laughs> Unlike poor Khashoggi, but you know. So they got rid of all the tables and mm -hmm. all the tools and everything and had the students drawing from life rather mm -hmm. than. Uh, dissecting bodies. Of course, you can see where the muscle begins and ends, but you never get the shape of the muscle. And the bones are so much the structure that you really need to know the bones anyway. Right. And you can't, in a dissection, you're never going to see the shape of the bones. So actually, there's quite a history of preference for drawing bones first. And even in Hungary, after the communist takeover, there was a painter, Jeno Barchwe, I'm not sure how to pronounce it right, who had been doing modernist paintings, and he was told he couldn't. So he said, if I can't do modernist paintings, I will teach anatomy. Mm -hmm. So he used Paul Richet's work okay. to draw on a chalk chalkboard and have people draw the bones through the oh. live model. Oh, I see. And that's we do that in okay. one of our classes, anyway. Right, right, really. How we do also do Nicolaides, and we do um, uh -huh. portrait one portrait class. Okay. Uh -huh. And so you have a, you, oh, that's why people come visit the nude models, right? Oh, yeah. they come <laughs> Is that why they come? Well, how are you and going can, to understand yeah. the body if you don't look at a naked body moving and taking right. different poses, of course?
The you know, United it, States is sort of stuck up when it comes to things like that. It's oh, like a sort of Victorian past, oh, right? It's, yeah, still. That's unusually like in Europe, they would scratch your head and wonder why. <laughs> you're afraid yeah, to show your body. I, I, I think are you every, proud of all it? over the world, <laughs> people are getting more uptight about it. But uh -huh. the, you know why? Did I tell you before why I have a figure drawing studio? No. It's my mother's unconscious desire. My mother was taken to Europe in 1928 by her uncle because she was fighting with her mother. And they got to Paris and they went to the Rodin Museum. Mm -hmm. And her uncle looked around and saw naked bodies and he pulled her up and she <laughs> never got to see it. This famous sculptor who you can go to them to the Met, they have him there and, you know, and see these incredibly muscled and lithe women. And yeah. Women oh, yeah. His, uh, everything, everything in motion, the transitional right. pose. Well, all the parts. Are my there. mother was so frustrated that I heard her over and over again saying how terrible it was that she couldn't see the Rodin sculptures, all these writhing bodies. My sisters never heard her say that. But I took it to heart. And I'm sort of making up for the fact that she was pulled out of that museum when she was right. 18 years old. Spending your life staring at naked bodies. Male well, and female, but which are more popular? Why, well, why not is the just, female form more popular? Um, than well, not necessarily in New York City, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'll take your something for everybody, right? Yeah. But um, not just staring at bodies. I also have models try out every Monday night at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm three, four, five people will show up and I train them. And it seems that the best way to train them is to do what Rodan did, which is to have them move very slowly and then someone says stop. And then they move very slowly and someone says stop. Mm -hmm. This Rodan was a fabulous draftsman. Almost like a director or directing people? A draft, uh, so you're saying a draftsman. Uh, well, he said the key to my art, he was a sculptor, but he said the key to my art is drawing. And over the, the years, sculpture, the I key mean, to I, sculpture was drawing. The key to everything in his yeah. art is drawing. Right. And um, of course, nobody in the public schools or even the universities are more conceptual art now. You're supposed to think of something and mm -hmm. have someone else do it for you. Well, we pay to somebody to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Nancy's it's, a little bit like that. <laughs> people who know what they're I doing know, right. do it for you after you have the idea. Sure. But uh, that's what it's all come to. But. And Rodin really, he never got into the uh, academy. He did fabulous sculptures, but mm -hmm. he wasn't accepted that much until he was about 60. Then he was rich and he could hire a lot of models. And his preferred way of working was to have a lot of them moving around. Mm -hmm. And then he said, stop. So we do a little bit of that, but most of the poses are, um, mm -hmm. are still. Now you asked me why are females more popular than males. Oh, yeah. uh, I try to educate people about the models mm -hmm. that it's the spirit in the person, the capacity to understand their own body and to move mm -hmm. that makes a good model, not sure. the gender. Uh -huh. But we also have transgender models too. Oh, really? But then, you know, the artists, are they complain a little bit. But All right. they want to know if it's, it's traditionally, is it a male or a female? I said, what am I going to tell people when I put it on the wall? Yeah. And then I get into trouble. <laughs> you are always <laughs> pushing the, uh, uh, the uh, so uh, where, do, where were you born, where were you raised? Who, me? Yes. Oh, born. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. To um, My father was the son of uh, an immigrant from Tipperary who came to clean house, be a housekeeper for a, a prestigious family. Mm -hmm. And she married a Norman English uh, Protestant, mm -hmm. but she was Catholic, right? So he had to accept that the kids would be brought up Catholic. And then my mother was one of the uh, old French families, mm -hmm. sort of, and Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to go into that too much, but From the they north met. Of French, they're like like uh, Normans and. Uh, well, my father was most. Uh, he was culturally Irish because his father uh, died when he was young, but my mother was also culturally French, and her mother was half Irish. But they met at a communist picnic, and my mother was a manic depressive and kind of crazy, and uh, the doctor. She went to church with my father before they were married, and the the doctor c pulled her aside and said. Marry that Irishman, or your children will all be crazy. <laughs> so she married him. <laughs> and that's your dad. But what? And that's, that's your dad. Excuse me? That's your dad. Oh, my dad, yes. yes. That was my dad that she yeah. married. Yeah. Yes. But they hadn't known each other that long. They only knew each other about three months, and they wanted to have sex. This is 1930s. Uh -huh. So they had to elope. 
Right. Because Catholics married, right? Catholics couldn't have sex without marriage. And so, of course, she got pregnant. So they were kind of stuck for a while. Uh, with not you? Oh, no, I'm the third one. You're number three, right? I'm number three. But and with then how did they Irish get to St. Louis? You know. No, no, they were in St. Louis. They were in St. Louis and yes. all this happened. My okay. oh. temporary grandmother went to actually the Carr family to uh -huh. be the housekeeper. I see. And I don't know if it's related to Lucian Carr, mm -hmm. the famous Carr families, Caleb and mm -hmm. Simon and all. But yeah. uh, she was keeping house in the kitchen, and the delivery boy came. And he was, a, I guess, a 19, 20-year-old or something from that mm -hmm. family. Horton was his name. And they fell in love in the kitchen, mm -hmm. in the big house kitchen, right? right? And then my mother at the other big house, my grandmother's house, uh, was more liberal than the rest of the people in her family and went off to the communist part picnics and things <laughs> in like St. that. St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Yeah, that's true. And well, it, this is this is not what my studio well, is. Well, but about. it's interesting to know. We only got two minutes left. Oh, so two let's, minutes left. Let's wrap oh, it up. Oh, I, I want to say. I just want to say we have soirees. I want to just say this coming Sunday we have a soiree at two ninety three Broom at five o'clock when Christina Mitchell, a friend of mine, the daughter of Allie Lee, who's Mardu Fox in. Subterraneans, mm -hmm. deceased, but she's going to read some of her mother's writings. So, oh, all right. So very intellectual. Okay, what time is that? Anybody? Five o'clock, 293 Broom, suggested donation, $20, but a donation, whatever you right, want. Right. Or more to help mm -hmm. you keep this amazing place together mm -hmm. as you had for 27 years. Wow, it's wonderful. And and to teach people art and, and to have all these, literally it must have been thousands of people who've over those years come through. Oh, right? yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, and there are fewer people now because the young people use those machines, but I really work hard with them when they come in. I try to get them right. to what, what, develop. What do, what do you find the changing in, in how people approach art? I mean, this is a time, you know, we, uh, the uh, they don't Marvel Comics guy just died. I mean, Stan Lee. Yeah, right? yeah. And that's what was very, very influential. Well, the young people don't have the patience because they're used to, and their photo they're influenced by photos or they'll copy photos, which they really just should be drawing even parts of their body's hand or the face. And they need to develop uh, uh, the skill of yeah. moving hand-eye coordination mm -hmm. rather than just copying a photograph. Or the know. expert copying, like a, like a copy machine or something like that. Well, it isn't just that, but the cameras already made the decisions. You have to make decisions when you're drawing because oh. you're looking with two eyes, so things are... You know, right. if you, you don't know really where they are, and you have to make a decision where the thing is with your pencil. Right. Minerva Durham, thank you for <laughs> making decisions with your pencil. Wonderful to have you on Let Them Talk. We'll have to have you on again to talk more about this, and we'll see you guys next week. Well, I had a fun time. It was great. Great.